All right, welcome back to the Artist Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Kasar, here with my very special guest, Emily Capel, all the way from the UK. Hi! Hi, so, <laughs> so nice to have you here. How are you doing? It's so cool to be here with you in England, but with you at the same time. Yeah, so just cool. uh, across the pond, as they say. Yeah, a bit of a big pond. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Emily, I've only been a fan of yours for a week. I told you before we started recording that I, I found you on, I think, Facebook. Somebody shared a picture, just a still picture of you performing at one of your local record shops uh, for Record Store Day on Saturday. And I was intrigued, didn't know anything about you, and just dug in a little bit deeper and found your social media sites. And then, of course, listened to your music and then directly went to Amazon and bought everything that you have available here in the U.S. I, I loved what I heard. So thank you for joining me today. Thank so I can you kind of... so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Isn't that like wonderful? The power of technology is fantastic. Thank you so much for, for doing all of that. Well, the thing is, there's so much out there, isn't there? I mean, even even if you're a fan of something, you can't. Sometimes it's hard to focus on what exactly you already like, much less find something new. I was yeah. happy to find you. Oh, I was happy to be found. Yeah, Thank you very much. You have the image that goes along with the music, which I love too. Yeah, I have a beehive. You and, do have a beehive, uh, yes. <laughs> that's right and uh, it's windy in london it's very windy amy winehouse lives in london as well and her beehive it does, she's like maintained it super well i don't know how she managed to <laughs> stop the wind blowing over but it's yeah. always really windy and like, on days like last year i had a festival and um i had to walk from one venue to the next and i had to have put this massive big plastic bin bag over my head because it was raining and it was so windy. So I was like, someone was holding my guitar and I was holding this bag to stop my hair getting wet. So yeah, I have, I do have a beehive and we do, I come from that mod culture. Like my dad was a mod. And uh, I don't know if you ever had that in America. That, uh, that is like a smart look and there's no. a Fred Perry, which is, a, you didn't have that in America. Well, oh my gosh. Google it and get it now because it's so cool. And uh, yeah, it's like it's just basically like looking smart with what you have. Amy Winehouse was a little bit of a mod, but yeah, uh, it's basically looking looking smart all the time. So that's what mod culture is, and I've sort of fallen into that category a bit. But you had some good stuff going on in the sixties in America. Oh yeah, absolutely. Regardless, yeah, I just uh, I just watched some stuff on what Johnny Cash was doing in sixties America. Which leads us into the first track quite well. Actually. Brixton Prison, <laughs> yeah, started off the it. started off the show with that. I love it. Thank you so much. I mean, that's me listening to Johnny Cash and writing, like how he wrote about Fulton Prison and he did so much at San Quentin and all that stuff. Is that near you? Are you anywhere near that? No, Folsom okay. Prison and and that stuff. That's out in California. So I'm on the East Coast, and that's all that's all West Coast stuff. Oh, so you're like. Biggie, and that's two packs. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in Pennsylvania, so I'm I'm at that I'm in a sweet spot between New York City and Philadelphia. I'm about the halfway point, so I can go to two pretty big metropolitan areas and still live in a relatively small community, which is cool. That's cool. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, America's massive compared to where I am. Yeah. It is. It is, and I, I often think about that. I've been. I was over in England once for a week over in 1994. I loved it because I love history and I love all things British, British music, television shows, things like that. So to actually be there for a week or so was really special for me. Oh, that's great. I live, I don't know if you know heard of Wembley Stadium. I have Wembley, sure. Wembley, the big thing. Yeah. I'm that way. That I can see Wembley from my bedroom window. Wow. I'm I'm Wembley. Yeah. Hmm. So that's where I am. You know where that is. <laughs> yeah, I do. And have you ever been over to America at all? No, I have a I have an auntie that lives in Boston, so I'd like to come over to America. But I want to do like the whole Sun Records and go see like Memphis yeah. and go see. I re when I was younger, I loved Frank Sinatra, and I always really, really wanted to go to Chicago because of all his songs when he spoke at Chicago. Oh yeah. And so I really want, and I want to go to Hitsville, USA, and Detroit. Detroit. And see, like. And, and, like, when you get there, I bet it'll just be, like, a big old building, but you still just want to go <laughs> to the history. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I, we yeah, all we do have... that. 
uh, I watched a, a documentary on Muscle Shoals, a recording studio over here that was very, very big in the 60s and 70s, and the Rolling Stones came over to record there. And it's, it's interesting. You have this big mythology around certain places like you're describing and then you get there and they all they are just kind of small brick and mortar kind of nothing fancy to look at but it's the spirit in those buildings and what came yeah. out of those buildings that really draws you into it yeah exactly I, 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 then we have this band called the smith sure a really big like morrissey yeah and um they had their photo for an album called the queen is dead outside a place called Salford Lads club which is in manchester so i went up to manchester and I went and stood outside the Lights Lads Club where Morrissey had his photo taken. And it's just the most ridiculous thing because <laughs> it's just a building. Yeah. And you're stood there and like loads of people are walking past who live there and they must see it every day and think, oh, for God's sake, look at that loser. <laughs> and, uh, but you still go, you still go and do it. So, yeah. Yeah, I want, so I want to go to America and I, want, I really want to see all those all those music places. Well, it's all pretty spread out, so you'd have to you'd have to give yourself enough time to get from from point to yeah. point because it's there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. What are some other places you you check out in London? I mean, there's a lot of music history there, and unfortunately, I see some of the neighborhoods and some of the parts of town that that are steeped in this musical history from the '60s to now are kind of going away and are getting gentrified and turning into havens for rich people and condos and things. And we have the same stuff happening here in New York City. But do you ever get to visit any of those historic places? Yeah, I mean, we're super lucky that at the moment my band have a residency at a place called the Twelve Bar which is where Madness, of English band called Madness, yeah, and Amy Winehouse, they had their residency there, and we've got our residency there. Wow. And so you get people coming in and, and taking photos because it's such an iconic venue, and luckily that's managed to stay. But there's a whole sort of place in in, uh, in, in London called Soho. I know you have one. Sure, yeah. Country, but this, we have a place called Denmark Street where the Enterprise Studios where the Sex Pistols used to rehearse and there's uh, the Alley Cat where the Rolling Stones used to play and a whole place called the Twelve Bar which is really famous and iconic for singer-songwriters and it was all on one road called Denmark Street and that's all been knocked down now. They're all making way for, I don't even know, rich, you know, places and then we, we've lost quite a lot of venues, we've lost the Astoria and the Astoria 2, which was very big in like the 80s and the punk scene, right. that's all gone. And there's a really famous gay sort of area in Soho, um, a venue called Punk has gone and a venue called the Candy Bar has gone, mm. which is all really iconic. And uh, yeah, they are, they do seem to be going left, right and centre. But luck, I was so lucky that I managed, I have managed to play the Alley Cat and Soul Bar and Punk and the Candy Bar, I played those. So I am really lucky, but a lot of places, our venues are closing over here, which is such a shame. It's, it is a real shame that we're losing them. You've not lost CBGBs, have you? Yeah, that's gone. No way. Yeah, that closed a few years ago, and they have they reopened. Is it still there? No. Well, I mean, oh, right. like the, I, I think the structure is still there, but it's not. It's not that anymore. Like what happens in New York City a lot is uh, what you described. You get you get folks that want to turn the neighborhood into something else and the real estate values go way up and the people that are in these places can't afford the rent anymore because the place is turning into mm -hmm. a rich neighborhood versus what it what it was i mean cbgb's when it started was that's the bowery that that's the that was a rough part of town at the time and you didn't go there unless you were going there specifically for something and now it's a fancy you know yeah. it's, it's a little fancier so places are gone but yeah cbgb's unfortunately is the thing of the past Oh, what a shame. That was one of the places that I wanted to go to. See, oh. Because, I mean, you had Blondie and Talking Heads and... The Ramones. People came out of it. So many yeah, people. Yeah, of course the Ramones. Yeah, so many people. Yeah. I think it's like a clothing shop now, if I, if I'm not if memory serves, you know, like a punk inspired boutique. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> but uh, of course it is. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny how these things. And, and really, if you think about rock and roll as a whole, if you go back to the early days, it was meant for the kids. It was anti-establishment kind of music, and then over time, I think our own nostalgia for things, looking back, wanting to keep a piece of that keeps it going but then also turns it into something that it was never intended to be which is which is sad yeah yeah it is sad it is really sad what a shame poor CPGB. yeah so much history there yeah, a lot of places up in, yeah. up in New York specifically that, that have gone that way. A lot of cool bars and a lot of places that have been around for 40 and 50 years are just uh, can't afford the rent anymore. Yeah, we are. We have a place over here called The 100 Club, which is uh, super famous for punk, uh, like Sid Vicious 
obviously had loads of stuff in the 100 Club and it's it's really, really famous. And that was going to go like a few years ago. And I think Paul McCartney stepped in. Oh. I think it was Paul McCartney. It was somebody like that and was like, no, we are keeping this. And that's still running. I've got a gig there.